I am genuinely concerned about what happens to Yu-Gi-Oh! after this set releases. Welcome back to another Should You Buy video and today, should you buy Rage of the Abyss, the next core set in the TCG that is genuinely about to change the game once again. And if you do decide to buy it, make sure to check out my sponsors in the description below, Kongscards, tier0games.com using code GALZO5. You can also follow me on Twitter to see when the singles go live. So, Rage of the Abyss introduces three new premier archetypes with Enhanced Metal Morph, Primordial, and of course the next chapter of the Sinful Spoil in the Abelstar story, Azamina. In addition to that, new legacy support for Six Samurai, Atlanteans, and Battle Wasp, and many, many more powerful staples. So starting off with the first archetype, let's get into it with Enhanced Metal Morph. This is a new wave of support for the old Metal Morph card that is basically another negate engine, unfortunately. You can now use the Black Metal and Darkness Metal Dragons to search for the new Full Metal Dragon, set the new Enhanced Metal Morph directly from the deck, and while controlling a level 5 or higher monster so you can actually activate it. So essentially, any way to set the new Enhanced Metal Morph, summon the Full Metal Dragon from the deck, and then, because it only can be summoned by its own effect using Enhanced Metal Morph, you can now negate any card. And this now turns the baby Black Metal Dragon into three interruptions, turning itself into a Heavenly Spheres that can bounce and then summon Druid Swarm from deck, then you can tribute the Druids for Enhanced Metal Morph, summon the Full Metal Dragon from deck, and send a card on the field, and of course, get an Omni Negate. This archetype also contains two new Zoa cards, Fiend Beast Zoa, which can search for the new Metal Morph Trap, and Metal Zoa X that can destroy cards when your opponent activates a spell or monster effect. And there's also the Metal Copycat, which is a mini normal summon engine that can make the Omni Negate live by normal summoning itself, setting the enhanced Metal Morph from deck, then changing it from a spellcaster into a dragon by its own effect. And during the opponent's turn, it becomes a level 5, which fulfills the requirements to activate the Metal Morph. The next star type is a surprisingly weird one, and it's called Primordial. This is a new normal monster engine. A small package of a powerful continuous spell that lets you add a primordial monster from deck, then separately summon a normal monster from the deck. Then during your opponent's turn you can tribute summon the imperial dragon as a quick effect, similar to what Fluendariz does, which can activate on field to negate all face-up monsters your opponent controls. Then banish all monsters with the same type and or attribute as a normal monster in your graveyard. So essentially just as a one card negate the entire field and banish a lot of monsters, that's relatively strong. Ideally you can pick a good typing which is relevant to the meta like a pyro normal monster or a fiend normal monster, then you can non-target banish your opponent's entire field. This new theme comes with two additional quick plays, Tremors and Shiller. Tremors can special summon a vanilla from the deck and has a graveyard effect that allows you to banish a monster from your opponent's field and Shiller can negate. This is a very small, rather insignificant wave of support, but this archetype is a premier archetype that is bound to get at least two more waves, which could be very interesting. And now, of course, what you've been waiting for as Amina. This is the meta contender of this set, and essentially, this is turning every deck into a top-tier meta deck. As Amina is the most powerful and influential engine of these premier archetypes out of Rage of the Abyss, continuing the sinful spoils in the Star story, as Amina introduces powerful new fusion monsters that synergize with the rest of the sinful spoils cards we've seen up until now. The most powerful of them is sinful spoils Deception. Deception is a continuous sinful spoils spell card which can tribute a monster from hand or field and add an Azamina card from deck to hand. Usually, what you will add will be the sacred Azamina, which can now tribute the Deception to summon one of your new level 6 fusions from the extra deck. Silvera, which is a straight up Omni Negate by tributing itself, and Arcielago, which searches a Sinful Spoils card on summon. Both of them are incredibly strong effects, especially with the lowered consistency of Snake Eyes. If you're in a need for an Omni Negate, that's great. If you need a starter for your now limited Sinful Spoils Snake Eye deck, well, that does it as well. The Abelstar or Wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils can now get you to whatever line you want and fill up the void that limiting Snake Eye, Ash, and Poplar has left on the deck. And now, for some legacy support. First of all, Six Samurai, one of the most beloved archetypes also showed in the anime video that Konami has recently made. 
6am gets five new cards with two main deck monsters that can of course special summon themselves for free and get your new six strike card double assault which is a new quick play that can reborn a six samurai or book an opponent's monster with 2000 or less attack in addition six am gets two new synchros legendary klesha shien which adds any six am monster or shien effect monster from deck on summon and has an additional monster negate destroy built into it and the legendary Klesha Enishi, which can bounce monsters your opponent controls by banishing that many six samurai monsters from graveyard and can float into a banished six samurai monster. Battle Wasp is another archetype receiving some legacy love with four new cards, including Battle Wasp Wind, essentially a new black whirlwind, which is of course a black wind card, but for Battle Wasps, allowing you to add Battle Wasp from the deck to the hand twice per turn and make one of your insects a tuner if used for a synchro summon. So now there's insect chaos angels as well. Rapier the Furious, which can place wind and then special summon itself, starting off your combo and additional two new synchros. The level six Sachi, which can be treated as a tuner and can return a continuous spell to normal summon an additional battle wasp from hand and the new level 12 grand partisan, which gains attack equals to your banished insects and if it is banished, can revive itself and destroy all cards your opponent controls up to the number of your banished insects and burn them for 500 damage for each card destroyed. And this is the namesake of this set, Rage of the Abyss, and the Abyss is of course referring to the new Atlantean and Mermel cards. This archetype gets two new main deck monsters, which can of course discard a water monster to summon an additional water tri-type from deck, which is of course Aqua, Fish, and Sea Serpent, a new rank 7 counterpart to Garunix Eternity, in Poseidra Abyss, which detaches two on your turn to send one water monster from Hander Deck as cost to return up to three cards your opponent controls and floats into three level three water tri-type monsters. And of course, no set is going to be complete without some further wave of support for recent archetypes. Starting off with Fiendsmith, of course. Fiendsmith is getting two new cards, including a new main deck monster, Lacrima, the Scarlet Sorrow. She's going to be arriving to the TCG to find out her husband is banned. Lacrima on summon can send any Fiendsmith card from deck to the graveyard. Very, very simple. It is, of course, a light fiend, and this, of course, improves the Fiendsmith's one card combo and can also send the Fiendsmith in Paradise Trap card, which hasn't been seen too much play recently, which can banish itself, send a Fiendsmith Desiree from deck, actually become an interruption. Centurion is getting two new cards. This archetype is getting like six waves of supports already. A new Synchro 8, which can add any Emblema card from deck, once again, adding to the incredible consistency and synergy of this deck. And a new main deck monster that is actually sort of a monster negate. It turns any of your opponent's monster effects into Centurion effects. Memento is getting a new ugly extender that can reborn itself if a Memento monster is destroyed. And finally, Millennium gets a new Blue Eyes White Dragon retrain card that can add Millennium Ankh from deck and send an opponent's monster from the field to the graveyard and reborn itself. Actually, an incredibly solid card. And now for the free agents, the last staples of the set. And oh boy, this is where it gets really problematic. Mulchami Fuwaris, not much to say. You already know about this card. You know that this, for all intents and purposes, max C in the TCG very, very soon. We thought the first Mulchami Perulia was great, but this card is straight up broken. Every time your opponent summons from Decker Extract, you draw one card. Yep. This card is likely to change the game significantly and boost Tenpai Dragon to probably the best deck status. And another card that could also help Tenpai dominate the metagame is, of course, Dominus Impulse. A new card in the Dominus line of hand traps that negates an effect that special summons a monster. Essentially, it's a mini Ash Blossom. You can also activate it from the hand if your opponent controls a card, but you'll have to give up the effects of Light, Earth, and Wind monsters for the rest of the duel. And this again, why Tenpai, which can run it, that don't run any of these attributes, is going to get a huge boost in consistency for going second. Drawing many cards, negating with Dominus Impulse, it's just going to be insane. And lastly, and Exalting Morganite, a new Morganite card with the previous time-tearing Morganite being used mainly in stun strategies. And again, this Morganite applies these effects for the rest of the duel. You cannot activate monster effects in the hand, your monsters can attack twice each battle phase, and if your monster battles an opponent's monster, the battle damage inflicted is doubled. So. 
There's again a lot to look forward to. As Amin, I'm Chami for hours, Dominus Impulse, incredible new cards. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Rage of the Abyss. Should you buy it? If you decide the answer is yes, make sure to check out tierzeogames.com and kongscards.co.uk. Use code GASL5 to check out to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.